the actual Middle East conflict is the same pharaonic war as always, with in this case the Arabic Philistine nobility trying to eliminate the newcomers of 1948 by using religion as their main tool. The battle in Gaza is not between the peoples, but between the 1948 newcomers of the Jay Walker nobility, here to the left, and the Arab Philistine nobility, here to the right. So here it says, Baron Ferdinand de Rothschild. You know, they are barons, or well, they look like barons. You see the Maltese Templars cross here, uh, because they are very much Republicans. And here, Alfred de Rothschild. So these also, these are for the horizontal Republican rule. They have to, they need to, because the jaywalkers, they didn't have any land in Europe. So they needed also a new system. So they really like the Templar system. And these ones are the vertical rule, you know, the feudal system. You can see this here, the slaves. And here are the feudal masters. So here you've got the jaywalkers on one side, and you've got the, um, the nobility, not the normal people. And here you've got the Philistine nobility on the other side. That's what the war is about. Just as in Europe, two world wars between the German nobility of the uh, Kaiser uh, Wilhelm II and the British nobility, more or less. You know, the Windsors and the um, and the Order of the Garter, of course. This is what the war is about. All wars are by the nobility. Here it says Ottoman Empire, also called the Caliphate. For the Arab nobility, Gaza and the entire JJ Bays still belong to the Turkish Ottoman Caliphate. Therefore, the Arabic nobility use religion as a pretext to bring back the Caliphate. Whereas a Caliphate was never by God, Allah, nor the people, but a Caliphate is a terrible feudal dictatorship by the Oriental nobility. So here you can see the flag with 100 years. And here it says 100 years without the Caliphate. So this year, 19, um, 2024, it has been exactly 100 years ago that the Caliphate ended um, in 1924. And that happened on March the 3rd. So this March the 3rd, which will be coming up next week, it is exactly 100 years ago that the Caliphate was abolished. And we can all see in the media these terrorist groups, they all want the Caliphate back. So we will see on March the 3rd, some very terrible things going on as a celebration, you know, to get back the caliphate, you know, which ended 100 years ago. So here you can read about the Ottoman caliphate. That was the last caliphate. Here's one of their flags. You see, it's, you know, it's not by God, all this, you know, it's a, uh, it's a nobility coat of arms. Yeah. So when did it end? Here it says, the abolition of the caliphate in 1924. When the Turkey, you know, became from a vertical rule caliphate, a horizontal rule republic by Atatürk. And... Um, 
Uh, that's uh, Atatürk. Freemason. Because the Republic is Freemasonry. And that's why there's a lot of talk, you know, by the Catholics and religion, you know, that the, the Freemasons are bad, but it's, it's exactly the same thing as the vertical rule by the, uh, by the caliphate, you know, they're the same people. So here it says here, this is the, uh, the chapter about the abolition here. Here, this is the last caliph. And here it says, on his initiative, the National Assembly abolished the caliphate on March 3rd, 1924. So next week, we have a March 3rd, 2024. You better watch that date, people. So I punched here today's date. And I've got my computer on French, so lundi, it's Monday, 26, uh, février is February, it's almost the same word, you know, 2024. So I'm telling you this on uh, about uh, March 3rd, 2024, and um, that it's 100 years ago that the caliphate ended, um, which will be in, uh, in, in a week's time or even less, maybe five days, yeah, five days. So I won't be finishing this video um, on that date. So we are five days shy of the date, and I'll probably publish this video a couple of days after, because it's a, it's a lot of work doing this. Sometimes I need two or three weeks to make a video. Yeah. So when at this date, you know, the, all shit hits the fan and I'm coming like three days after like saying, well, you know, this day, this and this will happen. You have to know that I'm, I'm saying this five days before. It needs a vertical war against our masters to stop all the horizontal wars in between the peoples. Hamas is a tool by the Arabic nobility and the JJ Bay's state belongs to the J Walker nobility, like the barons of Rothschild, the Levi Strauss nobility and others. Therefore, on October 7th, the J.J. Bay's state left the door open in order to mobilize the jaywalkers to be ready in their hearts and minds to wage war for their lords of the jaywalker nobility. The Gaza war is, as usual, an inner war within Pharaoh's nobility and the people have to fight it for them. This time, it's not the German nobility, but it is the Arabic nobility who wants the jaywalkers dead and gone. And as crazy as it looks, Prime Minister Netanyahu and the rest of his jaywalker nobility in Parliament had to sacrifice 1,200 innocent jaywalkers in the JJ Bays on October 7th in order to save the whole country and to make the people of the JJ Bays ready to fight for their lives. So I wrote it down for you here. Here it says NWO. I can't pronounce it because of the censorship. So it's. On the left side, NWO. On the right side, it says OWO. This is old, and this means world, and this is order. And this here is new. It's the horizontal rule versus the old vertical rule of the royalist, feudal, Arabic nobility of the caliphate. 
And this here is the Republican Jaywalker nobility. Of course, there's also Arabic Republicans, like Egypt here, or Turkey. Uh, Turkey became a republic in 1924 on March 3rd. So it doesn't really matter if Egypt or Turkey, if their religion, if there are Muslims or Arabs, just like the one, these ones here and the, the, the poor Philistines, as they say. No, that doesn't matter at all. The only thing that matters is if they are of the NWO, Republican, or the OWO, Royalists, like Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Dubai, they're all um, absolute monarchies. They're not constitutional monarchies. Some of these countries here in Europe, they have a constitutional monarchy, you know, and the constitution is Republican and WO, horizontal rule. But these countries, they are absolute monarchies. They, ha they don't have the, um, the Knights Templar constitution of the Republic. It's a direct rule. These guys, they govern directly all the way down to the people without any intermediary. Like Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Dubai. They are uh, feudal caliphate dictatorships you know, with no freedom. So these countries here, like Egypt, Turkey, and many others, they can flip any moment. Because like the people, they feel like more attracted to this here because of the religion and the ethnicity. But the government is this here to the left. You know, they're Republican and uh, Freemason rule. But they can, ch they can flip any moment. And if that happens, we got a world, a world war on our hands, probably. Then the whole NWO, the whole new system, you know, to rule over the worldwide slaves, it, it would collapse. So it is, in fact, an internal war between the Arabic nobility to the right and the Jaywalker nobility. So the Gaza war is an internal war, in fact of the nobility and these nobilities are both of pure pharaonic erev rav of the jay walker nobility and also the um the um the arabic uh, nobility so it's the traditional war between the all the owo vertical rule of the royalists and the nwo horizontal rule of the Republicans, the JJ Bays, USA, Europe, Turkey, and Egypt are all NWO Republicans. And countries like Qatar, Dubai, Saudi Arabia, and of course the House of Windsor, they want the vertical rule, royal caliphate for Gaza and the Philistines, for which they use religious zealots like Hamas, Hezbollah, Al-Qaeda, IS, and whatnot, who wrongly think that the caliphate is by Allah and for the people. They have no idea what they're actually fighting for in reality. Blinded by religion and by the lies of the Arabic nobility, the religious Muslim zealots don't see that, in fact, the caliphate is to reinstall Pharaoh of the Arabic nobility. So this Pharaoh's nobility in Arabic, they call it Fir'an. Pharaoh is Fir'an. So the caliphate is Fir'an. And this is why the IS, you know, and their black flag, they were raping children and terrorizing people, torturing people. You know, these are not things you do in a religion, you know, you're not supposed to do this. 
And these are the things the nobility has always been doing. Raping like a harem and torturing people, put them in a dungeon. And this is Fir'aun. So as many Muslims believe, you know, the IS, you know, there's a lot of conspiracy theories. And even I met white people, you know, Europeans, like, who believe that the, the IS was set up by the CIA, which is complete nonsense. They have no proof for it at all. You know, the only ones, you know, who have an advantage, you know, by founding the IS and their black flag, who want the caliphate, you know, is the ones who really are the caliphate or really were the caliphate, the descendants of it, the nobility. You know, the CIA is of a republican state, which is a horizontal rule. They do not want a vertical rule. So it's complete nonsense. As most of the stuff on the internet is nonsense. The media are telling nonsense, and then there's the controlled opposition. It's all nonsense. Where does the name Hamas come from? Hamas is an anagram for Sham, or the land of Al-Sham, which combines Syria, Philistine, Lebanon, and Jordan, which indicates what it's all about, namely to install the Caliphate of Sham, or the Caliphate of Al-Sham. What in fact the IS aimed to do, and what Hamas also wants. Now look at the Hamas letters H A M A S. Now just toss them around and you get Sham or Al Sham, meaning that Hamas has nothing to do with religion and in fact violates the valors of Islam. So here it says Hamas is an anagram for Sham. So this part of the world here is Sham. So this here is the JJ base here. Or here it says Philistine. I can't pronounce the name, neither the other name for the because of the censorship. Here's Jordan, this is Syria, and this is Lebanon. Altogether, this is Hamas. Here's the Al-Aqsa. So, and here it says Hamas is Sham. Here it says Sham includes present-day Syria, Palestine, Lebanon, and Jordan, extending from the Euphrates River to the Sinai. So this is actually what they mean from the rivers to the sea. This is not the Jordan River to the Mediterranean, no. It has all to do with the caliphate. From the river to the sea is from the Euphrates rivers to the Red Sea here and to the, the Mediterranean. So the rivers are here to here and here. This is what I mean, what it means. So Hamas is sham. Don't trust the media. They're telling you a lot of nonsense. But the media are good, you know, to, you know, to see what's going on. But they don't tell you why it's going on, neither who is behind what's going on. In this video, I tell you all what it's all about, because my house taught me so since I was 12 years old, from one generation to the other, in the French diaspora in South Africa. And I explain what my house is in this video here. I made it five years ago. Here's the title in the same channel. When I was a young homie Ross at school in South Africa, there was a boy with big flappy ears, which we called chimp ears. At that time, we didn't know how true that was, because now, 50 years later, it has been proven genetically 
that humans share no less than 98.8% DNA with the chimpanzee. That's almost 99%. It says 98.8% DNA, which they have in common. And when I recently saw a picture of this alleged terrorist by the name of Yahya Sinwar, I automatically had to think back at my school time in South Africa and that boy in our school who was, in fact, just as myself of the white race. So just look at the ears, you know. Because it's hereditary, that's why it's important. Here are the ears. And it says Yahya, sin and war. A chimpanzee has these typical protruding ears and narrow eyes close together. What approximately 1% of humans also have. Which is also hereditary from one generation to the other, as you can see here with young Prince Charles and his son Harry. Now King Charles had his protruding ears operated, so it doesn't show anymore that much. So here you can see Mr. Sin, Mr. Sin and War. You know, I don't want to call his name anymore. I just call him Mr. Sin and War. You can see the same ears of uh, young Prince Charles. He had it operated now. And here is the young Prince Harry, also the same ears of his father. And he also had it operated, obviously. And this is the guy I once filmed, you know, and he was sticking his tongue out, you know, like a reptilian. Um, I even found his name. So here he is from that film. His name is Andrew Gailey, G-A-I-L-E-Y. He sees his tongue a little bit coming out, but he was really sticking it out and got really quickly like a snake, you know, a couple of times, you know. And uh, I can't say the word, you know. And he was the housemaster in Eton of the, um, of the princes. The video is, this is the title, and it, it's on my channel, Homeland Security, from, uh, it's from two years ago. So, uh, his name is Andrew Gailey, and he also had these funny ears, you know, protruding ears. They all seem to have it, you know, around the, um, the Windsor Palace. Well, it's Sach, you know, Windsach, the king, you know, and there's a lot of inbreeding. So here you can read about the protruding ears. It says here the, um, def the deformity can be corrected anytime after five years of age. So, of course, they did it with all of them in the, uh, the royal house, of course. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and they all have it, you know, Mr. Sin and War, Prince Charles, his son, and many more. I'm, I'm going to show that to you. So there must be some sort of a hereditary connection here. For scientific purposes only, I wanted to make a collage comparison of Prince Charles, Prince Harry, and Yahya Sin and War with the chimpanzee in order to compare the chimp characteristics of the narrow eyes and protruding ears with these worrisome characters in actual politics. But I didn't dare to because of the Foktube censorship and its bogus rules. Since all wars and bloodsheds come out of Pharaoh's nobility and its open and hidden bloodlines, I wonder about the following. So, what I'm getting at is if the warlord Yahya Sin and War is related to the House of Windsor, who both carry 
the same hereditary protruding ears and narrow eyes. The British Empire ruled over Philistine for 32 years, from 1916 to 1948, which is called the Mandatory Philistine, after the British Empire drove the Caliphate out in 1916. And isn't it that's why we hear all the time of bringing back the caliphate. So here it says, mandatory Philistine from 1920 to 1948. Well, actually, it's from 1916, but officially 1920. But here, after an Arab uprising against the Ottoman Empire, arose during the First World War in 1916, British forces drove Ottoman forces out of the Levant. Yeah, so nine, uh, practically since 1916. So you can read it yourself here. Now here it says, mandatory Philistine. And this is very important. Well, it's, it's quite long, so you can look it up yourself. So theoretically, the British nobility had all the time to procreate a bloodline of sleeper agents, which is what Pharaoh's nobility has always done. As blood is thicker than water, as the proverb goes, and only the own bloodlines can be fully trusted. So here it says, blood is thicker than water. And look at his ears, the guy with the tongue. You know, also the same ears. So also probably same bloodline, another sleeper agent. They did the same in Afghanistan, by the way. Haven't you noticed that NATO's occupation of Afghanistan lasted exactly one generation? 20 years to procreate and train bloodline sleepers who look Afghan from the outside, but are pharaonic inside. Also, the Romans have done this with the white tribes of Europe. So here it says the fall of Afghanistan, 20 years of imperialist meddling. Imperialist, that means an empire, the British Empire. Now look at the badge of the Afghan dude here. It's a pyramid. You know? <laughs> That's what it means. The pharaohs are in control now. And even the Taliban, it's all infiltrated. And you know, it's not the same Taliban anymore. Just look at the comparison of the alleged terrorist Mr. Sin and War and King Charles. Maybe the British Empire wants Philistine back. Even more so listening to Prince William, who's telling the jaywalkers to stop killing the Philistine terrorists, while Prince William is a killer of Muslims himself who killed innocent Muslims in Afghanistan. So this is what he says here. You can read the whole thing. And he says here, I like, I, like so many others, want to see an end to the fighting as soon as possible. So it, it, he says he doesn't want to uh, to have the Hamas killed, you know. And I think the reason is quite obvious, as I just showed you the pictures before, the hereditary pictures. Uh, here it says, Prince William and Prince Harry have killed many innocent Muslims in Afghanistan. And if you look at this image here with the swastika, you know, this family seems to be obsessed and um, with wars and fascinated with, you know, murdering 
innocent civilians, you know, what exactly, you know, what the Nazis did, especially in killing, you know, uh, defenseless jaywalkers, you know, which what he's saying here, stop defending yourself, you know, will lead to the same thing as what you can see here on his arm. Prince William's brother, Prince Harry, recently wrote a book called Spare, in which he's boasting to have killed even more Afghans than his brother William. The killer prince boasted to have killed at least 25 Afghan Muslims. So here it says, here you see him in his Apache chopper. Prince Harry reveals he killed 25 in Afghanistan. That's what the British media said. And Prince Harry admitted to killing 25 people during his military service, confessing he's neither proud nor ashamed of it. Oh, he's not ashamed, eh? Well, that's why he announced it. And the book is called Spare. Oh, I mean spare? Spare what? Spare tire? Sparing the Muslims? No, not really. Sparing the jaywalkers? No, neither, with his swastika on his arm. So what's spare? Must be a spare tire then. So here it says, hey, see him again with the chopper in uh, Afghanistan uh, with the swastika. It says, jolly good fox hunting in Afghanistan, st starring Prince Harry. So, you know, it's funny actually that they call the chopper a, an Apache. It's like, I mean, they were, at, they were at war, like America, with the Apaches. So why the conquered people, you know, why give them the honor of an Apache chopper? You know, maybe in 10 years, the choppers are called Hamas, you know, when they conquered Hamas. And it's weird, isn't it? So here you see the other one, Prince William, here as well, in Afghanistan. Here you see the... Uh, the, the Afghans, the Pashtuns, probably. And here it says, a jolly good fox hunting in Afghanistan. Coat name, Wales for the killer princes. So here it says Wales. It's their, it's their coat name. And in Wales, you know, there's the Celtic people living there. They speak a Celtic language, you know. It's another conquered people for which they use the name, just like the Apaches, you know. So it's not really far off, you know, that the next chopper will be called Hamas or, or Philistine or, or Jaywalker or whatever, you know. You, you can see this, another conquered people, the Celts, you know, by the Roman Empire. Well, who was the Roman Empire? The elites were all pharaohs who came... Um, after the uh, Germanic tribes uh, uh, sacked Rome, they came to France and became the nobility. So I guess these killer princes are the very last to utter a single word on the Gaza war. And just look again at the comparison of killer prince Harry with Yahya Sinwar. Mr. Sin and War. They could very well share a couple of hereditary genes of the royal pharaonic house of Windsor. Only the nobility can raise an army and an organization like Hamas. Nobody else can do this. And this is what these pharaohs have been doing for thousands of years. They fight and other people from the inside out. And even before the British Empire ruling over Philistine, the Ottoman Caliphate brought their amount of aristocrats into Philistine, whose descendants are still there, partially. So here is an octagon here. You know, it's universal for the nobility, you know, uh, with an inner circle here. So the octagon is protecting the inner circle. I don't see a square here, but there must be something, you know. 
And now I want you to look at these incredible long noses, you know, this one too here, all of them. Now look at this one, and this one here, <clears throat> incredibly long. And this is not something, you know, as people say, you know, the jaywalkers, not at all. It's the nobility, you know, look at how long. And I'll give you some examples. Look, here are some pharaonic noses. This is Ramses the Great. Same sort of nose, you know, like you just saw before of all the caliphs of the Ottoman Caliphate. This is Louis the Fourteenth. Same nose, very long, and you know it doesn't go in like this here. It goes all straight, like like here, like his as well. And here another pharaoh. Well, he's got the same nose as uh, Louis the Fourteenth. You know? And it's all the same race ruling over humanity, both in the Orient and in Europe. And they come out of ancient Egypt, like here and here. And this, because they are the same, same noses as the uh, caliphs. So this is why we have all the Muslims in Europe, because the noses wanted it like that, you know. And this here is Ivan the Terrible. Now look at the nose, the same nose as Louis the Fourteenth, as Pharaoh Ramses the Second, as the caliphs of the Ottoman Empire. It's all the same race. And here, the other one, it's called Lily Putin, the even more terrible. And look how long his nose is. It is going in here, though. It's not like straight, but it's 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 very long, you know. Europeans don't have this. You know, it's all the same. Uh, this is all, he was the first Tsar of Russia, Ivan the Terrible. Well, let's hope this is the last Tsar, you know, so we get done with it, eh? Ivan the Terrible and Lily Putin the Terrible. So here I added a third one, and they all cut the same ears. Look at it. And look at this ear here. It's, it's very much like this one here. And um, so this is Amin al Husseini of the uh, Philistine nobility, al Husseini, very important family. And you all see the long nose here. Eh? I just showed you a whole lot of long noses, like Ivan the Terrible and uh, the caliphs of the Ottoman Empire. Well, he's got it as well. Eh? Narrow eyes, narrow eyes, narrow eyes. So now look at the comparison between the Philistine, Amin al Husseini, here all the way to the left, Yahya, Sin and War in the middle and young Prince Charles, who all have the same narrow eyes and protruding ears, and therefore might very well be related family-wise. And, I mean, al Husseini was in the same business in wiping out jaywalkers as he was the head of the two Muslim SS divisions. Hanjar and Skanderbeg, who did a real jihad genocide in the Balkans during World War II, murdering 400,000 innocent European civilians. Just to give you an idea what's coming at us. So here you see him, Amin al Husseini, doing the Nazi salute in front of the Muslim soldiers on European soil. Here's his name, Amin al Husseini of the Arabic nobility al Husseini. And here it says SS division Hanshar, or the, in English this is a J, Hanjar, and SS division Skanderbeg, sometimes written with a K here. And this is their logo. This sword is the oriental sword, it's called the Hanjar. Amin al-Husseini met Hitler on November the 28th, 
1941, while staying four years in Nazi Germany until the end of the war in 1945. And he also met Mussolini in October 1941. And here you can see him together with Heinrich Himmler, the head of the SS. And here you can see him again in front of a lot of, well, the row was a bit longer, going all the way to here, a lot of Muslim soldiers on European soil doing the Nazi salute once more. And these, here's his name, Hajj Amin al Husseini. A Hajj, it means he went to Mecca on a Hajji. So these are, these are the sort of things he said today. Arabs, rise as one man and fight for your sacred rights. Kill the jaywalkers wherever you find them. This pleases God, history, and religion. This saves your honor. God is with you. And today, 80 years later, we hear the very same words by Mr. Sin and War here, Yahya Sin and War, and his organization here, the Sham al Sham. So, you know, same rhetorics, same ears, and very much, most likely, the same bloodline. I mean, Al Husseini was of the Al Husseini Philistine nobility and a friend of Adolf Hitler and a friend of the head of the SS Heinrich Himmler. All these wars, bloodsheds and genocides are done by the nobility out of Pharaoh's aristocracy. So here he is. And I mean Al Husseini you know, all these Arabic names, Al Husseini and Al uh, Saud, it means it's nobility. It's like the German von or the French de. You know, von Stauffenberg, you know, and von Hohenzollern, you know, and uh, Guillaume de Nogari. It's all nobility. And the Arabs, they have Al. And here it says, Al Husseini was the scion. I'll show you what the word scion means in a minute of the Al Husseini family of the Jerusalemite Arab nobles, a nobleman, you see, who trace their origins to the Islamic prophet Muhammad. Well, maybe that's where the ears come from. And I know another one who also been traced to the prophet Muhammad. So here's some more uh, on Amin Al Husseini. And here it says, in fact, the Husseinis dominated the prestigious post of Mufti in Jerusalem from the late 18th century until the 20th, with few interruptions, and they occupied several others of the city's important political, diplomatic, and religious uh, positions. With their considerable influence in the city, the family was this very much part of Jerusalem's nobility yeah it's the nobility of pharaoh and they owned significant land in and around jerusalem as well as across philistine as a historian described the husseinis the family had become become landed aristocrats wielding considerable political power um Together with the Khalidis, Alamis, Jarallas, and Nashashibis, you know, it's all nobility. Well, the article goes on, and uh, you can find it yourself. The word scion means the heir to a throne. It says the heir to a throne or a guardian, a descendant of a distinguished uh, family. It's all the uh, etymology of the word. Yeah, Sion. And as the Knights Templars thought to be heir to the throne, and therefore had to make the new horizontal rule Republican NWO system of the nobility, therefore the Knights Templars called the place around the temple of King Solomon Zion or Sion 
as they thought to be the legitimate heirs or scions of the throne. It says from Middle English, scion, and Old French, scion. And the word, you know, it's still spoke, um, spoken like this and written like this in French. You know, it's almost the forbidden word. As I've already told you many times that the elders of Zion are in fact the elders of the Priory of Zion, which was a Templar's commandery in the Swiss town of Zion or Sion, as they speak French in that Swiss town, and the Templars also spoke French. And as the Templars originally spoke French, the French word for Zion or Zionist is still written with an S, pronouncing it as Sion or Sioniste. That's why the political movement of Zionism derived from the nobility and three British lords of the Balfour Declaration, as only the nobility knows what it's all about. Today, those poor jaywalkers are stuck with the word Zionism, which is not even theirs, which they don't even understand what it means and what half the world hates. So, so much for God's chosen, who don't even know their own history and have no clue what's really going on. So here you see the Knights Templars, here you see Swissy. And um, as uh, this town of uh, Sion, where they speak French, is in Switzerland, it still exists, right? where the Priory of Sion was. And this is the original way of writing Sion. And um, and from the old French, it's without the C, it's S-I-O-N. And um, so the elders of the Priory of Sion, and they are the heirs to the throne of King Solomon. And King Solomon was married with the daughter of Pharaoh, as it says in the Bible. You know, it's, it's all turning around uh, this, you know, the Temple of Solomon and... Knights Templars, and um, yeah, so in those days they wrote Sion, this Sion here, meaning an heir to the throne without the C, even in English, they wrote it S I O N. And as these Knights Templars, they wanted to be the heirs of the throne, making the new horizontal Republican NWO system and this is what it's about from what i heard from my house when i was a kid it was actually the russian tsar nobility or around the tsar who wrote this book uh, of pages the elders of the priory of sion or just the elders of sion because they hated the Templars that much, who wanted to kill the Tsars, you know, to with the revolution and make uh, the new aristocratic system of the uh, the Republicans and horizontal rule. Whereas the uh, the old the O W O of the Tsars and the old uh, Russian nobility, they were of course the vertical rule and um, the feudal system and um, so they were very much afraid of these um, of the priory of Sion, actually the knights templars the pharaohs were already in gaza five and a half thousand years ago in tel es sakan which is five kilometers south of Gaza City. And you better believe they never left and that their descendants are still there and became the ruling aristocratic families of Philistine 
and Gaza, like the Al Husseini dynasty, together with the Khalidis, Al Lamais, Jarallas, and Nasha Shibis, the type of ruling elite who always want more without working for it, as the nobility always did worldwide, and of course, including the very much existing Oriental nobility and their science, who just want to grab everything for which the jaywalkers worked for in the JJ Bays. Of course, this idea doesn't please very much the jaywalker nobility, like Baron de Rothschild, the Levi and Strauss nobility, who own the JJ Bays and their jaywalker slaves. So the Gaza war is basically a war between the Arab nobility and the jaywalker nobility. Whereas the worldwide media portray the Gaza war as a war between the jaywalkers and the Philistines, which is entirely wrong. We're being played as usual. It's not a war in between the peoples. So here you see a Philistine, an Arab, with a tablecloth on his head or something. Now you see the jay runners or the jaywalkers uh, running as usual. So this is the people and this is the people. And here it says, from the river to the sea, Philistine will be free. This is what I told you about. You know, and it's not from the Jordan River, as they say, till the um, the Mediterranean. No, this is what I told you. It's about Hamas, which is Sham. And it's from the U Euphrates River to the Mediterranean and the Red Sea. It's all about Sham. You know, it's not about just this here. So this is what it is, again, about the river to the sea. And it says again, Sham includes present-day Syria, Palestine, Philistine, Lebanon, and Jordan, extending from the Euphrates River, from the river, to the Sinai, so to the sea. Yeah, this is the uh, Sinai, yeah, and this is the sea, and here's the sea. It's all about Sham, which is Hamas. Hamas is Sham. Hamas is an anagram for Sham, you know, as the nobility always covers up things, you know, and the nobility in this case is the caliphate. So here it says, Tel As Sakan, yeah, there it means the hill of Ash is now almost entirely destroyed, uh, Tel or archaeological mound standing some five kilometers south of Gaza city. And what is today the Gaza Strip on the northern bank of Wadi Gaza? It was the site of two separate early Bronze Age urban settlements, and earlier one re representing the fortified administrative center of the Egyptian colonies in southwestern Philistine. From the end of the fourth millennium, yeah, that's 6,000 years ago, and a later local Canaanite fortified city of the third millennium. The location of the mouth were of what was probably a paleo channel of the river allowed it to develop as an important maritime settlement with the natural one. Its geographical location and here uh, of the position of importance of the crossroad of land-based trade routes between Canaan and the old kingdom of uh, Egypt. As of 2000, the early Egyptian settlement was the oldest fortified site known to researchers in both Egypt and Philistine. Uh, well, it goes on, you can read it yourself. So here it is, this is Gaza. So, you know, they're all fighting, you know, about this, Philistine and, you know, the jaywalkers, they say, oh, it belongs to us. And then the, the Philistines, they say, oh, it belongs to us. But who was the first? That was Pharaoh. So who, to whom does it really belong? Yeah, Pharaoh, and they are the nobility. You know, and 
and they make all the rules, you know, and this is what the fight is about. Yeah, the Egyptian city, the Bronze Age, age port dates to the end of the fourth millennium BC and was contemporary with En Bezor, an Egyptian first dynasty staging post along the ways of Horus, trade routes in the northern Negev. En Bezor, Zor, you know, that's from Sar, meaning the king or pharaoh, was much smaller. But it was an important source for fresh water to supply the caravans. There were also some other small Egyptian settlements in this area. The architectural remains, as well as most of all of the findings from Area A, are typical of the Nile Valley around 3000 BC. The only other Egyptian settlement in this area that was older than Es Sakan was Taur uh, Ik. Bene. And here's this N Bezor. We can have a look at it. You know, it's it's near the Gaza Strip, you know, so it's full of pharaonic stuff there, you know. It's not like as they uh, here's the N Habazor. It's uh well where this the October 7 massacre was like, you know. There's probably one of those kibbutz now or something. And uh, um, anyway, pharaohs were already there five and a half thousand years ago, and they left descendants who are now the nobility, either you know Jaywalker nobility and Arab nobility, and this is what the fight's about. So here it says the history of Philistine, and I'll let you read it yourself. Yeah, it's it's quite long, you know. But what I what I find interesting here, it's about the chapter about the Egyptian dominance here, and yeah, this all of this was called Canaan, and um, and Canaan. There's the word ka, it means the soul when you're still alive. It's a demotic, pharaonic word, and ke na, an, you know, on, it's from on, you know, Osiris. So it's, uh, you know, it's all about here Egyptian and, and the Egyptian withdrew from the area and uh, Hazor. Yeah, well, where is this one? Galilee and uh, so you know the, the pharaohs that were here you know already five and a half thousand years back and um, they became the nobility and this is what I want to emphasize that you know this oriental nobility use religion to unify and mobilize the people to make them believe they're fighting a just war and go straight to paradise when they murder a couple of jaywalkers all blessed by allah to murder rape mutilate torture and lie. Just as the Nazis made a religion out of this here. This here is the same Hamas Hitler technique to unify and to mobilize the people behind an identitarian idea and a widespread uniformed symbol in a total dictatorship by our masters of Pharaoh's nobility, who created religion in the first place back then in ancient Egypt in order to subjugate the dumb slaves through invisible hocus pocus. You know, when I see this, you know, with texts here holding it up and with a megaphone shouting with a Philistine flag and the, the tablecloth 
here and here over their heads. You know, I have to think of, you know, a political movement, you know, and not a religion. Uh, it says here, massacre those who insult Islam. I mean, this is political and even worse. It says, freedom, go to hell. And the G is made out of two crescent moons here. Now, charming, isn't it? So personally, I must say that Islam is not a religion anymore. But Islam has become a political movement that is aggressively protesting in all the capital cities of all nations in the world and shouting murder and genocide of the jaywalkers and all other religions. So here it says, behead those who insult Islam. And this is in, um, in, in, in a European city, in England, this year. Massacre those who insult Islam. You know, it's, it's like what I'm saying. You know, they're calling for murder and, and here, I don't know, it's also a European or an American city. It says, keep the world clean and to put the, uh, the JJ base state in the garbage can here. I think mean, this is hardly, you know, religious. You know, this is political. This is political and this here, no, it's even worse. You know, this is, it's not even political. This is, uh, you know, this, there's no diplomacy, diplomacy or something, you know. This is plain murder. Crime, this is crime. War. So it's, you know, in my eyes, if I see this, I, I don't think of a religion. I think of a political movement, you know, that has even got worse than a political movement. These are not the acts of a peaceful religion, but these are the acts of a worldwide brutal political movement, shouting instead of contemplation and murder instead of compassion. So this was also in England. It says here, yeah, slay those who insult Islam. Europe, you will pay. Demolition is on its way. Oh, that's a nice rhyme, eh? Europe, you will pay. Demolition is on its way. Behead those who insult Islam. Butcher those who mock Islam. Uh, Europe, you will pay. And extermination is on its way way of oh, charming and this is happening in european cities and again if i see this it doesn't make me think of religion but it makes me think of a um well of two things you know it makes me think of a political movement and it makes me think of a mob anyway since 2005 islam as a religion has been dead officially when the Arabic nobility of Al Saud blew up the Jamarat, where the Hajis threw stones at the three obelisks in order to kill Iblis. So here you can see it's an obelisk and they were all throwing stones. And here it says Jamarat 2005, it's the end of Islam officially, and that's what real Muslims told me, you know. And um, so they were throwing stones at the obelisk. Well, not a bad thing, I would say. Because of this and the destruction of the Jamarat, the Hajj to Mecca is not valid anymore. And the Hajj is one of the five pillars of Islam that has crumbled, as it has been prophesied that in the end times, Islam as a religion will disappear. This, these will be the signs, one of the signs of the end times in Islam. So in 2005, here it says again, Jamarat, 2005, you know, they blew up 
with explosives the uh, this year. So they couldn't throw stones at Pharaoh anymore. And they replaced it with three ovals. Of course, there are three for the concept of three, which is the, uh, the old world order. And now there are three ovals, three of these here. You know, like uh, like the Oval Office, you know, or like, uh, yeah, so this is TSS today, and this is before 2005. And here you can see the actual footage of how the Jamarat was blown up. Even here, there's the three of these here, and there were three obelisks. Here you can see the explosion going on here, you know. It says here the old Jamarats were blown up and replaced with new ones. So the footage can be seen on my channel, Gatse Frats here. It's 12 years ago, from 2012. And here's the title. So... And now there's nothing to be find to be found about this anymore. Not in Wikipedia, nowhere. And of course, no footage anymore. You know, they completely hide it. What happened here? Of course, these pharaohs or Firaun of the Ar Arabic nobility didn't like it very much that the slaves were throwing stones at these three pharaonic obelisks in Mecca, at the Jamarat. Because the obelisk is the symbol of pharaonic domination. Pharaonic domination as through the house of Al Saud, who therefore blew up the Jamarat in 2005. So here it says, Pharaoh Al Saud. So here you see a couple of dudes of the, I know, a four probably, of the royal dynasty of Al Saud, together with their beloved pharaonic obelisk in, uh, in Washington, D.C., in America. So, you know, you can see here how they love it, you know, to be near their obelisk here. Yeah. Otherwise, they wouldn't do this, right? You get it? All these, this is the pharaonic nobility, and they're worldwide. You know, you get them in Europe, you get them in Asia. The jaywalkers have them, and of course, the Arabs have them. Uh, why not? You know, all peoples have them. And we're all being dominated by pharaoh's nobility. And of course, they didn't like it, you know, that the slaves, they threw stones at their beloved obelisks at the Jamarat during the Hajj in Mecca. So they blew it up and destroyed it, you know. I think the obelisks themselves were not destroyed, you know. They're just the uh, the foundation, as you'll see that if you see the uh, the video footage. They probably kept the obelisk somewhere. Of course, a pharaoh does not destroy an obelisk, right? So officially, Islam has been dead since 2005. And what's left of it is murder, rape, torture, takia, and violent protests of this political movement that wants more land like the Caliphate for the nobility on the land of Al Sham. It's the Oriental nobility who want the vertical rule, feudal caliphate back and use religion for that goal so the slaves can identify themselves under a common denominator. Just as the Nazis did with their pan-Germanism to unify the dumb slaves into a single fighting unit, for the nobility. So here it says play and slay, which for these ones would be pray and slay. Here it says pray and slay, and the other ones play and slay.
And these ones here do prey and slay with an E as in predator of the, the predator of Pharaoh's nobility. Here it says prey and slay. So we got play and slay, pray and slay with an A and pray and slay with an E. It's always the same technique, which is another proof we're dealing with the same people behind the screens over and over again throughout the entire history. All these terrorist groups like Hamas, Hezbollah, Al-Qaeda, the IS and whatnot, they all want the caliphate. So we can all be slaves in a feudal vertical rule by Pharaoh's nobility. Cool. In Gaza and the entire Philistine Many emperors and their elite dominated and left their nobility descendants at a certain time in period from Egyptian pharaohs, Babylonians, Persians, Greek, Romans, Ottoman Empire, the British Empire and many more. And they've been fighting over that particular piece of land ever since and leaving their consecutive nobility after each conquest who now all claim a piece of the cake while mobilizing the various commoners to do the war for them so here on the side here's the side of the jj base and where they say we are not netanyahu this is the people and here is the Gaza side, the people again, we are not Hamas. And this is exactly what it is, you know. It's the nobility fighting over this, over the, this piece of land, and also how to rule it, most of all. Vertical versus horizontal. So here it says, the history of Philistine. I have to take other words, you know, otherwise, like for this here, I have to take other words, otherwise the, the censorship will take away my uh, video. So they were all here, you know, all these emperors and empires of the nobility, of basically Pharaoh's nobility, and they've all been fighting over the land. So it says, strategically situated between three continents, the region of Philistine, also known as the land of the JJ base, I can't pronounce this word, I'm sorry. It's full censorship. And the Holy Land has a tumultuous history as a crossroads for religion, culture, commerce, and politics. Philistine is the birth, birthplace of the J. Walker religion and um, Christianity, and has been controlled by many kingdoms and powers, including, there we go, ancient Egypt, ancient J. Walker, J. J. Bays, the Persian Empire, Alexander the Great and his successor, so the Greek, you know, the Hasmoneans, the Roman Empire, several Muslim caliphates and the Crusaders. In modern time, the area was ruled by the Ottoman Empire, then the British Empire. And since 1948, it has been divided into the JJ Bays, the West Bank, and the Gaza Strip. So they've been fighting over it for ages. And the um, Pharaoh's nobility, after each empire, they left their descendants here. And this is the problem. Look, here it says that Amin al Husseini is from a noble family. I have to tell you this again because it's very important. So here it says al Husseini was the scion, you remember scion, of the al Husseini family of Jerusalemite Arab nobles who trace the origins to the Islamic prophet Muhammad. Look at the ears, eh? So. Husseini is from a noble family, 
and he has the same ears and narrow eyes as King Charles and Prince Harry. So look at the ears, this one and these. It says here, Amin al Husseini, this is Mr. Sin and War, and this is Charles III. All these narrow eyes and big floppy ears. Yeah. And it is hereditary. And here the other picture of Charles once more from 1967. Here it says HRH, it means His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, probably, or yeah. And HRH in French it is SAR, Son Altesse Royale. And which is in fact his official title, both SAR and for the people it's HRH, but amongst themselves they call it SAR because SAR it means uh, the king or the queen in the demotic pharaonic language. Very important for them, they know they are the pharaoh. And why else would Amin's brother? whom you can see here, Kamil al Husseini, be made a companion of the British nobility's secret order of St. Michael and St. George. Huh? As whereas the nobility only accept their own bloodlines in those orders and those closely related to it with the same ears and eyes. So here it says here. So here's the name, Kamil Al Husseini, the same family, here written a bit differently. And the British also made him a companion of the order of Saint Michael and Saint George. Oh, there you can see the order. And he was succeeded by his brother Mohammed Amin Al Husseini. Oh. I think he's got the same ears. Well, at least he got the same hat. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's the the order of Saint Michael and Saint George. And Saint George, you know, that is the um, the protector of the Knights Templars. And so he's part of the nobility. You know, there's no doubt. They only give these orders to each other. You know, to their own bloodlines. They don't give it to the people, the commoners. So here you see the order of Saint Michael and Saint George. And it says it's named in honor of two military saints, Michael and George. So here you see the Templars cross. And here um, it says Knight Commander, and the red cross is the cross of Saint George, and in the middle you got uh, Saint Michael, and the whole thing here, this here is a uh, in an octagon, you know, because um, that's the top of the Nazi Templars. And here you got a lot of. Uh, Grand masters, you know, they're all princes and kings and earls here, the Earl of Ethland, the Earl of Halifax, the Duke of Kent, and the Prince Adolphus, you know, the Prince George, and many, many, many others. So, you know, you really think they would just give it to some. Bedouins of, of Gaza or something. You know, th this is what the media is portraying. That the, um, right here you can see it. So the cross is the cross of St. George. And here you got uh, St. Michael. Military saints, it says, eh? And, um, so here's a lot of, you know, it says knights and dames of the Grand Cross, you know, 
it's all like sir, sir, and lord, and you know, you must be a, a diplomat and a, and a governor, you know, in order to get this, or a sultan. You see, the sultans they get it as well. This one here on a throne of Zanzibar, uh, you know, British diplomats, and you just don't get it like this, you know. And in the Gaza war, you know, the media, they portrayed the, um, the people in, in Gaza, the Philistines, as, you know, some simple, you know, like Bedouins or Arabic, you know, commoners, like, you know. But they're not commoners, these ones here. You know, a commoner doesn't get, like, the... The order of Saint Michael and Saint George. You, you just don't get it, you know. So this is what I want to emphasize on: that there is a a very powerful nobility in Gaza and in Philistine, a, a, an Arabic Ottoman nobility out of Pharaoh, you know, and they work together, you know, with the um, the British royal house. This is what I want to show you here. Look, the queen was wearing the order here, where the red cross represents Saint George, the saint protector of the Knights Templars. And that's why the Knights Templars, uh, one of the reasons they have a red cross. And the bloke with the dagger in the middle is Saint Michael. And all these kings, queens, princes, and princesses being in the order. So you really think the British royal house would just give the order to some Philistine Bedouin? No, this is the noble Al Husseini dynasty, undoubtedly related. To the Windsor, if you look at the ears. Uh, so here she's with uh, Prince uh, Philip. And um, here is the Order of St. Michael and St. George. So in the middle, there's the guy in the dagger, you just saw it before, and the Red Cross. Very much related to the Red Templar's Cross as the Order of St. George. And here you see it's written here Kamin al Husseini. It's written differently than before. Well, this is because Arabic is not being written in Latin letters, but in Arabic letters. So you can write it down the way you want, actually. You know? But usually the Kamil is written like this, and the other one, Amin, his brother, is written differently. And look at the ear, you know, it's going all the way to here. Look at it. It's really big. Same as his brother, you know. So here's a better picture of the order of St. Michael and St. George. So the red cross is St. George here in an octagon, and this is St. Michael. And this is what she's wearing here. So here again, the brother Amin al Husseini, there he is. And uh, here it says once more that Amin al Husseini is related to the Prophet of Islam by the name of Muhammad. And in fact, so is King Charles III of Britain, a descendant of the Prophet Muhammad. Through Zaida of Seville, a Muslim princess from the 11th century who converted to Christianity and became the concubine of King Alfonso VI of the Spanish royal house of Castile. And this Spanish house of Castile later on married into the house of Windsor. And here you see the result. And his name is Charles al Windsor bin Harabia in his ancestral 
clothing, ready to defend the house of Al Winsar bin Arabiya and its religion with the sword. So here you can read about it. I'll read it for you. It's little known by the British people that the blood of Mohammed flows in the veins of the Queen. Brooks Baker wrote to British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher at the time. Brooks Baker connected Queen Elizabeth to Mohammed via Zayda of Seville, a Muslim princess from the 11th century who converted to Christianity and became King Alfonso VI of Castile's concubine. However, it's not clear if Zayda was actually related to Mohammed or not. Abdulhamid al Ahuni, the historian who penned the article for Al Usbui, believes there was a connection to using Zayda as his linchpin. He traced Elizabeth's ge genealogy back 43 generations all the way to Mohammed. The purported connection builds a bridge between our two religions and kingdoms, he tells the economists. You know, it's the same story of uh, Donald Trump, you know, having, you know, from his Scottish mother side, being related to the royal house of Denmark and, um, and Norway. I made a video about it um, on my channel, Homeland Security, I think it was. So my logical question after all this is as follows. Are then those protruding ears from the prophet, whom they all seem to have in common as their ancestor, and that are now all over the news through the ears of this alleged terrorist here? Then could this also be the reason that, of course, Prince William also has the prophet as a common ancestor, that Prince William is backing up the Hamas and its leader with the same ears as his father and brother. So I repeat here what he said. I, li I like so many others, want to see an end to the fighting as soon as possible. So he's implying that the, uh, the jaywalkers shouldn't defend themselves. He see the swastika of his brother. And I repeat here, Prince William and Prince Harry have killed many innocent Muslims in Afghanistan. So if his father has the, is an ancestor of Mohammed, well, so does he. And remember, and so does he here, Mr. Harry. So, and remember, I mean, Al Husayni, who was uh, the head of two Muslim SS divisions, you know. And if he has also the ancestor Muhammad, and so did I mean, Al Husayni, well, you get the connection through this symbol here, the swastika, you know. I mean, why do they do this? Why is he saying this, you know? It all has a reason, you know, and the reason is that blood is thicker than water. Blood is thicker than water. That's what it's all about. It's the nobility. Wouldn't Prince William's latest opinions concerning the Gaza war be the third proof that they are in fact all related? We should also assume that Prince William had his ears secretly operated as a child. Therefore, it doesn't come as a surprise that Prince William and future King of England is protecting Hamas and his alleged relative Yahya Sin and War by telling the JJ Bays and the jaywalkers to stop defending themselves, which can be considered the fourth proof of Yahya Sin and War being a sleeper agent for the British Empire and genetically related to the house 
of Al Windsor Al Arabia bin Arabia. So this guy here of the Royal House of uh, Al Saud of Saudi Arabia, that's the name Saudi Arabia comes from there. He is uh, allegedly also a descendant of the Prophet Muhammad, just as this guy here, whose grandmother, uh, the Queen uh, Elizabeth, was a descendant of, um, of the Prophet Muhammad and also his father, so him too. So both of them standing here are uh, allegedly descendants of the Prophet. So what's going on? I mean, how come all these royals are descendants of the Prophet? Then, logically, the Prophet himself must have been of Pharaoh's nobility as well, as all these ones here are of the nobility. And they have this ancestor, the Prophet, in common, who is also, you know, logically of, of the nobility, you know. Uh, what do you think this is? You know, well, these are all pharaohs. So what is this? This is the sun, of course. I mean, what else could it be? You know, like the sun rays here. You know, it's um, so it says here, Amun Ra, sun worship by Pharaoh Al Saud. Look at this one here. Uh, you know, look at them. You know, well, they are not. We know where they are not English. You know, and they're definitely not even European. In Arabic, Al means house of, as in a royal house, which in Pharaonic is the Per, the Per A. It says, House of Sword is a translation of Al Sod, an, an Arabic dynastic name formed by adding the word Al, meaning family or house of, to the personal name of an ancestor. In the case of Al Saud, the ancestor is Saud ibn bin Mohammed bin Mukrin, the father of the dynasty's 18th century founder Mohammed bin Saud, the son of Saud. So bin, it means the son of. So this dude here with granny's tablecloth on his head, and with the same hereditary Yahya Sinwar ears and eyes, might be called Charles Al Winsar bin Arabia, which you can read here. Uh, here it says Charles Al Winsar bin Arabia. And I seriously believe the house of Al Winsar bin Arabia are not Europeans at all, as you can see here, which allegedly is one of the reasons of the massive import of Muslims in the UK, Europe and America. Hey Charles, can you tell us why your pals here of the Royal House of Al Saud are all covering up their ears? Here it says severe collusion, because if you compare these, what's being said here, and this image here, these two images in this collage, you know, we can see there's a very severe collusion going on. And considering his recent royal advice to the jaywalkers, it is very obvious that Prince William al Winsar bin Arabia wants the jaywalkers to end as in Outwick during the whole catch without any means of defence. Which becomes even more obvious if you look at the Nazi ties of the al Winsars with the Nazis, with King Edward here visiting Uncle Adolf, and Princess Elizabeth practicing the Nazi salute with Prince Harry walking around with his favourite swastika shirt. And after all, you know, they're admiring and honouring 
worshipping almost these two killer saints like Saint Michael and uh, Saint uh, George. So here it's, uh, here's, it says King Edward the Seventh. There he is. This is Princess Elizabeth. And here you can see Prince Harry. I mean, couldn't it be more obvious? So here it says Uncle Adolf, here King Edward the Seventh. And look at it, how happy they are. Smiling, he's smiling, even Uncle Adolf is smiling. And here it says Prince Harry. He, oh, look at that, he's having the same symbol here as this bloke here. You know. So there are numerous alleged indications that the royal house of Al Winsar bin Arabiya wants the JJ base to disappear and the jaywalkers to perish. Most certainly so, because the Windsors have an alleged internal quarrel with Lord Baron de Rothschild, the Lords Levi and Strauss, and the rest of the British jaywalker nobility in England. So here it says Rothschild, Rothschild on the left-hand side, and here you see Windsor. They all got their daggers out and their swords out here as well. And they're situated in England, which is being called Great Britain or United Kingdom nowadays. But I still call it England. So there's an internal war going on. It's so obvious. Mind you that due to the jaywalker nobility's diaspora and consequently not having had their own country for 2,000 years, the jaywalker nobility here on the right-hand side have always been in favor of Republican NWO horizontal rule. Whereas the royal house of Al Winsor bin Arabiya and their pals in Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and the other Arab Emirates have always been for the OWO royal vertical rule of a feudal monarchy, which these guys here call a caliphate, for which they misuse religion in order to have the people fight for and build their aristocratic caliphate. Just as the Nazis had the Germans fight for the Aryans, from the pharaonic Arion, meaning born out of the sun, whereas the Aryan master race are, of course, Pharaoh's nobility in Germany and Pharaoh's nobility in England, who come out of Germany anyway. And the same thing happening now again in the Middle East, where Islam has been turned into Islamo fascism by the Oriental nobility in conjunction with the royal house of Al Winsor bin Arabiya. Remember how the aristocratic Amin al Husseini, here to the left, collaborated with the Nazis, while Philistine was under a British mandate. You all remember my video here, Agent of the Garter, Adolf Hitler which we can see here in progress in this vicious Nazi circle by the royal house of al Winsar bin Arabiya. And this dark prince of the house of al Husseini visiting Adolf Hitler and Heinrich Himmler, while his Philistine homeland belonged to the British Empire. Is it that hard to see how the Windsors are involved in all of this? They are connected to all the players and all their consecutive nations. I told you so, that all wars are internal wars 
of the nobility, and especially two world wars in between the new Republican NWO horizontal rule and the old royalist feudal OWO um, vertical rule. And now World War III coming up for the very same reasons of horizontally very versus vertically. The Gaza war is an internal war of the nobility in between the Republicans and the Royalists of the Caliphate. So you see the guys of the Caliphate and this they want to make a Caliphate out of it from the river to the sea, from the Euphrates River to the Mediterranean and the Red Sea. Look, here you can see the Jerusalem city wall with the sun hieroglyph in it of the 101 winged sun disk of Horus. So here it is. Watch my 101 movies. So here you got the O and these are is a one and here's a one if you if you put it up like this, you know. And these are the wings of Horus and this is the sun disk. You know, I made so many movies about this. Watch my video, The Pharaoh Show, and the 101 series. This is in Jerusalem, in the JJ Bays. This is pharaonic and probably built by the Ottoman nobility in the 16th century, just as we can see in Europe and in ancient Egypt everywhere. So here it is again. So the Nazis, they exactly had the same thing, you know, because it's all pharaonic and horrors. The Nazis were the Nazi Templars and the Knights Templars were of the nobility and the nobility comes out of Pharaoh. And the Nazis had the wing here and another wing. And here they had the, the, the Horus winged sun disc with a swastika in the mill, you know, and now it's next to this flag here which the jaywalkers thinks it's theirs. Well, it isn't even theirs because this is the seal of King Solomon. So this King Solomon seal is the same as this pharaonic thing here. You know, it's all by Pharaoh. And if the jaywalkers really were the supposedly, you know, God's chosen, well, obviously God would tell them all about this, but it didn't happen, you know. It's me, Homie Ross, telling everyone about this and telling the jaywalkers about this. So, you know, you have to, dear jaywalkers, you know, you have to let it lose this thing about God's chosen people and all this, because it's just, it isn't true. Don't believe your Erevrav, you know, and fight for your lives, you know. There's no God is going to save you. You have to fight for your lives and you have to do it now. Here you can read about the walls of Jerusalem. Look at it, it's quite magnificent, really. Very old stuff, you know, a lot of history to be seen. Uh, here, the Ottoman period, um, 6th century stuff. There it is, that wall. Magnificent, eh? That's very old, eh? Here's some more. If I would go there, I would go for this, you know, for the history, you know. All these old buildings, you see here. Uh, this is probably older than the Ottoman Empire because the... Uh, I'm not sure if the Ottomans, I mean, they were Turkish nobility. Look, it even has a fleur de lis, you know. Why why does the Oriental nobility has have the the symbol of the uh, of the French kings? Eh? Well they're all the same, you know. Uh, you wanna play soccer in a uh, in a castle? And here 
another sun hieroglyph on the government building of Lebanon in Beirut called the Grand Serai, from the pharaonic word Sar for king or pharaoh, as in Sar Ai or Sar A, the big king. And, you know, here it is. Here's the flag of Lebanon. I think they have a tree in it, the uh, Seda tree. Here you can see the sun disk of Horus in the middle. And here are the two wings. You know, this is also 101. And, um, you know, why am I showing you all this? You have to know that there's a lot of nobility in the Middle East, and they're still ruling everywhere they always have been and this is the reason for the gaza war and everything what's going on so here it is grand serai of beirut sar a you know the big pharaoh the big king sar ai so here's that building you see the sun hieroglyph and here's the flag of uh, of lebanon there are some more buildings that are interesting here. Um, like this one here. This I think this is the gate, the uh, the northern gate, it said, of the Sar Ai. You can see here the, um, the sun hieroglyph here, the two wings and the sun in the middle. And here it's there's a circle for the compass in a square. So it says uh, square and compass, you know, Freemasonry, because this is the uh, the new system. You know, it's the government building, which is the Republic. And the Republic is being ruled by Freemasons. So this is why we have this here. And there's probably a lot more to see. This is the, the Seda tree again. Here's another sun hieroglyph here. How many? One, two, three four, five, six, seven of these things here, squares. No, they're squares and circles. There's one, two, uh, one, one, two, three, four squares and three circles making seven. So it's the concept of three and four. And it's exactly four for the square, what I've always been telling you, and it's um, it's three for the circles, you know, which is the concept of three for the uh, compass. And then you've got two pillars here for Yachin and Boaz. Well, it's everything is here. Eh? And this is in the Middle East, you know. So this is the internal war between the vertical rule and the horizontal war, uh, rule. So here I got a more enhanced, uh, detailed um, picture of the, the north gate of this building. I don't know where it is, maybe on the other side. And it looks like there are seven squares, by the way. So, But anyway, here there's a circle and there are eight things around, you know, octagon. You see, that's the octagon in the middle and it even has an uh, inner circle here. The inner circle is protected by the octagon from the square. You know, same thing. I've shown you this so many times. So I'm sorry, these are seven squares. But anyway, it's the same thing. It's probably these these little black ones are probably circles. And, you know, so it says square and compass, you know, all over. So in Lebanon at the moment, there is the Hezbollah, you know, and they all say, you know, the, the Sunnis hate the Shia Muslims and the Shia Muslims hate the Sunni Muslims. They all hate the, the Christians and the, uh, and the Kurds and the uh, Yassidis, uh, if I pronounce that well. And of course, the Jaywalkers, you know. But none of them sees by whom they're actually being ruled by. You know, they're ruled in Pharaonic or in uh, Arabic. They're ruled by Fir'aun, you know, by Pharaoh. It's all over here. There's a sun hieroglyph. And here it says square and compass. And instead of, you know, opening up their eyes, you know, they, uh, they blame their neighbors, you know, for everything, you know. 
here you can see the Parliament building in Damascus, Syria, with two times the square and circle for the square and compass. As Syria is a republic with only Freemasons in Parliament, which is the rule of a NWO republic. On top of that, there is the sun hieroglyph, and above that, a depiction of Bashir al Assad, of the royal house of Assad, in an octagon, and the 101 sun hieroglyph winged sun disk of Horus. These are all pharaohs ruling the Middle East. So here we see the, uh, the flag of Syria, and um, here there's the falcon, just as this falcon here, it's not an eagle, it's, it's all because of this. And here's the sun hieroglyph, there's the sun here in the middle. It's nicely done because, you know, it had to be the opening of this, the entrance like, so, but this is a circle, you know. And here you see the two wings. This is the sun hieroglyph or the 101. It's the same thing as this here from ancient Egypt. This is the sun disk with the two Uraeus snakes. And these are the wings of Horus. This is called the winged sun disk of Horus. And we see the same thing here. And here, just as in Lebanon, we see the circle here, the inner circle. And here is a square. So it says square and compass. And at the same time, there are eight things here. One, two, three, or eight, you know, with the little ones and the long ones here. So there's also the octagon, you know, in the same, you know, because the usually the octagon or the lower grades in the police and the military, you know, they're made out of the people, out of the square. So this is why it is like this. So it says here, square and compass here and also here. It's all here, you know. And here you see the depiction in Damascus or another town of Bashir al-Assad, the dictator of Syria, the pharaoh of Syria. You know, al-Assad, you know, I just told you so. Al, it means the house of, it means a nobility, aristocratic house. And he's in an octagon. So the octagon is defending the inner circle, which is the bloke here with his, sun, with his sunglasses here. And on each side, there's the wings, you know. And that's why we got an opening here, because, you know, there are the wings. The wings of uh, Horus, just like this symbol here. They know it, you know, that's why they do it. And the Nazis they had exactly the same thing here, within the circle, the swastika. And then you got the wings of Horus, and this is a falcon. This is a falcon, and this is a falcon. And also this is, you know, depicting a falcon, the sun hieroglyph. So Pharaoh's nobility, they're ruling all over the Middle East. So why don't you guys open up your eyes and stop fighting each other, like between the Philistines and the Jaywalkers, you know, the Arabs, the Muslims and the Jaywalkers, and the, the Shia against the Sunni, the Sunni, you know, and against the Christians, against the white race, you know, it's everybody against everyone, you know. So, in spite of the fact it's so obvious, you know, we got the enemy within, you know, and they're all, they're all ruling in parliaments, and, you know, it's they depict it everywhere, on the walls and, and their own symbols like here, the Nazis and the pharaohs, you know. Why don't you open up your eyes and listen to Homie Ross? Therefore, in Syria or Sham, there was the nobility's inner war between the horizontal rule Republic of Syria and the vertical Sharia rule Caliphate of the IS, which full name I ne neither can pronounce due to the censorship machines. Syria is a full pharaonic demotic name from sar ri a from the demotic the king pharaohs were born out of the sun and here 
We can see the sun here and here and here and here and also here. So Syria is from the Demotic Pharaonic Sar for a king, like the word Caesar or Nebuchadnezzar, not very far away. Or the Tsars in Russia, Sonaltes Royal, you know. And Ri, it means the sun, officially. And A, it means big or pregnant. So, you know, the sun, pregnant, kings. So the pharaoh kings were born out of the sun. And of course, the name Sharia, it means the same thing. The Sharia is a vertical rule by the caliphate, by the pharaohs, by the Sharia. And therefore, it is not a coincidence that there is a resemblance between Prince Philip to the left and Havez al-Sad, the father of Bashir al-Sad, al-Assad, to the right, who both have quite identical ears. It says, the Caliphate by Pharaoh's nobility. And here you see the caliph or the emir, and here you see the people who have to go into the to the dust, you know, to, to kiss his toes or whatever, you know. What an honor, eh? And here they all have to bow for the caliph. So the poor people of the Middle East believe that the only solution to escape the Arabic dictators of Pharaoh's nobility is religion and its supposed caliphate. Not knowing that the caliphate is a system by Shaitan, Iblis, and the Dajjal of the very same pharaonic nobility whom they wanted to escape in the first place. Only the first, whom you can see here, are horizontal pharaohs. And the second, whom you can see here, the vertical pharaohs. I, I explained the difference between the vertical rule and the horizontal rule in my previous videos, and it is very important to understand this. And because the Oriental people of the Middle East can't figure it out in this total chaos, they blame the jaywalkers for everything. Well, in the end, you have to blame someone, right? Look how the pals of King Charles al Vinsar bin Harabiya murdered the Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi in 2018 in Turkey, butchering the poor man and cut him up in tiny body parts to manage the physical proofs out of that Saudi embassy in Turkey. So it says on a van, probably in England, look at all the camera, it must be England, I know. It says here, this is Jamal Khashoggi murdered on October the 2nd, 2018 with the, the guy with the tablecloth here, the same one as here, looking over his shoulder, shoulder and smiling. It says, justice for Jamal. So, oh, now I get it, the tablecloth here and here. They butchered him up and they needed the tablecloth, you know, because they cut him up into tiny parts. And, well, if you digest that, you know, and have a meal, then you get rid of the evidence, you know. So that's probably why the uh, the tablecloth, eh? This is the nobility and what we're dealing with. Our masters, our medieval butchers, who butchered Jamal Khashoggi only because he criticized the royal pals of Sultan Charles and Caliph William, as if the embassy of Al Saud 
was transformed into a medieval castle of the Caliphate with a torture dungeon in it in the middle of the 21st century. So here you can see the Caliph William together with his pal of Saudi Arabia of uh, Al Saud worshipping Amun Ra, the sun. Here it says the city of Los Angeles, Jamal Khashoggi Square, a journalist and advocate for human rights and democracy slain by the Saudi government. Well, let me tell you, Saudi Arabia does not have a government. This is the government. It's a vertical rule by the, by the, by the monarchy, by the pharaohs. A government, you know, is a horizontal rule. These ones here of the house of Al Saud, you know, they give the final orders, you know, and a government is a horizontal rule, you know, of a, um, a republican democracy. There are many people in a horizontal rule and in a government ruling together and talking. And whereas this is an absolute monarchy, it's a vertical rule. So maybe you want to change this. This is the nobility who have no problem at all to provoke a large Middle East war by using their Hamas or Sham and their Yahya sin and war in order to reinstall their worldwide caliphate. And you can be sure that when the Muslims have finished off the JJ Bays and the Jaywalkers, that after that, the Europeans will be next on the list. Look, he's already having his tablecloth ready ready to be dished up. I guess the one world end times government will be a caliphate one, giving us all the end times chip in our hand and forehead. We're practically seeing the birth of the end times caliphate of Pharaoh's worldwide nobility. I suppose that Sultan Charles al Winsar bin Rabia here said to his son, Look, William, can you do me a favor for my friends of the Oriental nobility like Al Saud and the Emirs of Qatar and tell those jaywalkers in the JJ base to stop defending themselves? because we're not moving on here with the Caliphate project. We're being played, people. They are leading us directly into the end times of a total control rule of Pharaoh's nobility. Just watch this very important video I made 12 years ago on my channel Gatsefrat about how the beginning of World War II is related to the biggest discovery of the 20th century, where one year prior to the war, the biggest oil reserve of all times was found in Saudi Arabia on March 3rd, 1938, making World War II possible barely one year later because it needed a lot of oil to have all the tanks roll, all the submarines and battle cruisers sail, all the jeeps and trucks driving, all the cannons move, all the bombers and fighter planes fly, and this is what they were waiting for so World War II could start. And on this moment, you see Al Saud doing the Hitler salute, the Nazi salute, and visiting Adolf Hitler in the eagle's nest. So, watch this movie. I made it 
it's not, it was 12 years ago, in 2012, now we're 2024, and here's the title. Make sure you download it because I already took it away once, you know. This is so important. We are being played. And these are the pals of King Charles Al Windsor, you know, bin Arabia, doing the Hitler salute, you know, having the tablecloth on his head here, you know. And all of this happened where the caliphate of Al Saud rules. With, in reality, the house of al Winsar bin Arabiya pulling all the strings. And that's why we had two Muslim SS divisions in Europe murdering 400,000 European civilians, with at the head the aristocrat Amin al-Husseini from Philistine. And circle closed with today's Hamas, Yahya Sin and War, which is all related to Saudi Arabia, the house of al Winsar, and the discovery of the biggest oil pit in history in 1938, just before World War II, enabling the entire World War with Amin al Husseini and the two SS divisions, and now this here. Here, look at this treat in Saudi Arabia, showing the concept of three and four for square and compass. Here it is. So there are three squares for the squares, and the concept of three, there are three of them, and the concept of three is stands for the compass. It's the same all over the world, with Pharaoh's nobility ruling the globe and having their internal wars, which we, the people, have to fight for them, like human pawns on a chessboard, with two noblemen playing us out. The nobility is very abundant in Gaza, and here is another proof of that. And there are even ancient castles like this Qasr al-Basha. Sounds a bit like castle, doesn't it? Qasr. It's from the 13th century with here the sun hieroglyph here of Horus. Just as anywhere else in the world and on numerous castles in Europe as all nobility derives from Pharaoh. It's this local nobility of Gaza, the driving force behind Gaza, together with Al Saud, Qatar, and the house of Al Winsar bin Arabiya behind the screens. Believe me, Mr. Sin and War is from the nobility as no one else can achieve this kind of organization. And Pharaoh's nobility use religious hocus-pocus as a higher authority to set the people's conscience in peace, just as they did in Europe during the Middle Ages and afterwards through ecclesiastical terror and ecclesiastical fairy tales. Hamas is like the Spanish unholy inquisition. Exactly the same, because it's the same people behind it who always use the same techniques. So here you can see the, uh, the in Spanish inquisition, you know, carrying the crosses, and they're all like hooded up, just like Hamas, you know, with their hoods. You know, and here praying is exactly the same thing. And it's the nobility with their castles. Pharaoh's nobility, they are behind it. You know, as the church, it, it has always belonged to the nobility. And the Protestant church was uh, founded by the Knights Templars. Uh, so here you can read about the Qasr al-Basha. 
Casa, like castle. Here you can see it behind the gate. You know, there's the staircase. Here was the uh, the sun hieroglyph. Here it says 13th century. And well, read it yourself. Also, call it Radwand Castle, maybe. I don't know. So, the Qasr al Basha. So, in Gaza, there are castles, you know. And um, I just want to point out how important it is to know that the nobility in Gaza, they are very, very present. And this is what the Qasr al Basha looks like today in 2024 bombed by the JJ Bay's army and the Jaywalkers. What a pity. Well, we still have the picture, thus proving once more again the overall presence of the nobility in Gaza and their descendants still ruling today over their utterly brainwashed population, while of course the nobility of Gaza. They are now hiding in Qatar, Dubai and Saudi Arabia, while the uh, commoners are just camping out on the beach. So here you can see at the corner the sun hieroglyph here. Yeah? And this was the entrance and I think here was the uh, the steps going up here. So you can compare this. I'll show you the picture of how it was in 2023 uh, once more. And here it is again, the magnificent castle, um, Qasr al-Basha, so of the dynasty al-Basha, with here the sun hieroglyph, and here the entrance. You can see the metal bars in front of the windows. And I guess they had this part just renovated in colors, you know which you can see in the in the rubbles. So it is not anymore, which is a pity because it's in a very important proof that the pharaoh's nobility, you know, worldwide nobility, they're also in Gaza and in Philistine. And they're running the whole show. So here I did a comparison. So it's, you know, it's exactly the same work here and here. And then you've got this line here, and then here, and then the bigger stones, and then the smaller stones, like here, the bigger stones, the smaller stones. Only this looks different, but it's, you know, it's bombed out, and maybe it's from the other side, you know. So this is what it looked like in 2023, before the jaywalkers bombed it, and this is what it looks like today, 2024. It's gone. And I looked it up, Kasser, it, it means a palace or a castle. So it doesn't only sound like castle, but it, it, it is a castle. And Basha, it means a pasha, you know. That's a high rank official, high ranking official. Uh, it's a Turkish word, al-pasha. So it's the castle of the pasha. It's a um, it's a nobility the uh, the nobility's castle which you can see it is by the way and but anyway this well it's got also the metal bars and like here but you can see it's the um, it's the same castle it's um, completely destroyed now and also this building here in Gaza has been completely destroyed. It's the ancient fortress from the year 1387 by the name of Khan of Amir Yunis al-Navruzi and has also been destroyed. But anyway, it shows how present the nobility has always been in Gaza until this very day. And they are the ones behind the Gaza war and behind Hamas. As usual, it's Pharaoh's nobility, as usual. So it's very important to show, to, to know these images, here, like here, 
these ancient castles, you know, that it's not just a bunch of people camping out on the beach, you know, who are not, who don't have any more food and and the uh, the Hamas and killings and everything, you know, but it's very important to know that there is a Gaza nobility. And the nobility, you know, they're always the ones ruling and steering everything. They are the warlords, you know, telling the people, you go into the war, you kill these and that. And they're also the ones behind all religion, just as in Europe. The pharaonic media won't tell you this. Huh? They only keep you on a primary emotional level of poor Philistines versus poor jaywalkers sp splitting the world into two camps. The whole shebang can only be solved through cold intellectual analysis instead of this um, emotional slave level. Yes, it sounds hard, but war is hard, and our masters even harder with us their slaves. There was so much oriental nobility in Philistine and the entire Middle East who were all having real slaves as an estimated 14 million Nubians were slaves and owned by the Arabic nobility throughout history. It is therefore that in Arabic the word for a slave and a Nubian, whom you can see here, is the same word, and which is the word Abd, as for instance in the name Abdullah, meaning a slave of Allah. So for the Arabs, and most of all the Oriental nobility, of course, a Nubian is the personification of a slave. Then in 1948, the jaywalkers forbade slavery by the Arabic nobility, who therefore lost wealth, land, and power, because a nobleman will never work himself and needs his slaves to work for his dynasty. Then the hard-working jaywalkers grew in wealth through plain hard work, making a little paradise out of the JJ bays, while the Philistine nobility literally faded away in lazy backwards feudalism without slaves, who couldn't cross the threshold into the modern age of industrialism and science. And in their aristocratic despair came the only solution which they had practiced over thousands of years, namely terror, the caliphate, feudalism, lies, takia, and a massive birth index in order to steal everything for which the jaywalkers labored so hard and successfully for, transforming the backwarded Philistine into a JJ Bay's paradise. Well, this is what the nobility always did all over the world. Stealing, robbing, torturing, lying, wars without end, and have the people work in a feudal system while they themselves lie on their backs the whole day while raping our daughters. Ladies and gentlemen, this and nothing else is what the Hamas and the Gaza war is all about. So here you can read about the history of slavery in the Muslim world, and here it says the Arab slave trade was most active in West Asia, North Africa, and Southeast Africa, and rough estimates place the number of Nubians enslaved in the 12th centuries prior to the 20th century at between 4 to 10 million. 
Well, I even heard about 14 million, but it, I mean, 10 million is already a lot, and even 4 million. So it must have been very, very much, you know, very many, many Nubian slaves. And even the word for a slave and a Nubian is the same word, namely Abd, as in the word Abdullah. Maybe it's also in the text somewhere. And as you read it yourself, Qatar plays a dominant role in the financing of international terrorism, where Putin and his oligarchs shipped all their wealth, which led to the downfall of the Swiss Credit Suisse Nazi Bank in 2023, which you can see in this video here, which I made last year. You see Credit Suisse, they are yachts, bringing, transferring all the money to the Emirates, like Qatar is one of the Emirates. And you can see that here on my other channel, Homeland Security, and here's the title. And also the Swiss uh, great eminence here, François Genoux, and personal friend of Hitler and Amin al-Husseini, eventually had his Al-Taqwa terrorist bank based in Qatar and in Switzerland, together with the Swiss Hans Huber, who came twice to threaten me and my family while I was in Switzerland. So the name Huber, it became uh, Hoover in uh, American English, like uh, J. Edgar Hoover and uh, President Herbert Hoover. It's another Huber. So here you can see François Genoux. And here's the title. He's a, he was a great eminence. And I made this video in 2014. So that's um, 10 years ago. On my channel, Gatsefrats. And I talked many more times about this. So here you can see the Emir of Qatar, probably this one, or maybe both of them. And this is in Qatar. And here you see the Sun hieroglyph. It's also the, um, it's the 101. You know, if you put this up, it's a 101. That's where it comes from. And it's the winged sun disk of Horus. Here's the sun disk, and here are the wings of Horus. As we're being ruled by pharaohs all over the world, and especially here, you know, it's an emirate, an emirate. So Qatar is ruled by an emir of the Arab nobility and was a British protectorate from 1916 to 1971. 55 years to theoretically make some royal descendants by these ones here. To allegedly have these kind of characters born there to infiltrate the Middle East for the royal house of al Windsor bin Arabia, who, as we know, are not even English, but from the German house of Gotha Coburg, and aren't German either, but pure pharaonic as the entire nobility. So here it says, the house of Saxe, Coburg, and Gotha. And um, here you go. Well, you can read it yourself. Find it yourself. Here it's about the United Kingdom here. Uh, the British line of uh, Saxe, Gotha, Coburg was founded by King Edward the uh, Seventh. Uh, he was the son of Queen Victoria and Prince Albert of Saxe Coburg, there we are, and Gotha. His successor and son, King George V, changed the name of this line of the royal house and family to Windsor. And that's not very long time ago, because King George V 
he died in 1936. So this happened in the 20th century. So here you can see it. And here you can read about it, Qatar. And um, here it's about the, uh, here, the Ottoman period. And here's the British period. Yeah. From 1916 to 1971. So Qatar became a British protectorate. <laughs> protectorate. <laughs> On November the third, nineteen sixteen, and it got its uh, independence here. Well, independence. There's no thing as independence, you know. In nineteen seventy one, it's all about bloodlines, you know. And here you see the stamp. It says Qatar, and here's uh, Queen Elizabeth. Well, you, you explain me about independence, eh? It's all about bloodlines, really. And the politics, yeah. yeah. Qatar is officially a semi constitutional monarchy, but the white powers retained by the monarchy have it bordering an absolute monarchy. Well, it, it, it is an absolute monarchy, you know, really. And. Um, it's all about this pharaonic bloodlines. That's what it's all about. You know. And they're presenting it completely differently, changing names into Windsor. And, you know. A chameleon couldn't do it any better as these ones here. How they're changing colors, changing names, changing appearances, disappear pop up somewhere else again and completely leave us in the dark of what they really are and what they are really trying to achieve under a chameleon's veil under which they present themselves to their surroundings and you are the surrounding here you can see qatar on the map here and how it's basically a part of uh, Saudi Arabia, it says in French, Arabie Saoudite. All of this is Saudi Arabia, almost going to the JJ base and the Mediterranean. And also the other emirates like uh, Dubai and uh, Kuwait, they're all basically a part of uh, Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is a um, an absolute monarchy. So is Qatar. So is Kuwait, and so is Dubai. Oh. The name Qatar is being pronounced as Qatar in Arabic, which suspiciously sounds like Qazar, as in Qazaria. Qatar from the pharaonic. Ka for soul and Sar for king, pharaoh, all together meaning where the souls of kings live, for, for Ka Sar or Kathar. Those searching for Kazaria, you better look here where all the money is and where it says so in the name Kathar and the Kathari Ah. Katharia. So here you can see from an airplane window the extremely rich Qatar. And here it says Qatar. It sounds very much like Qazar. The car is exactly the same. It's only the T, and this here is a, uh, a Z or an S, which comes out of the pharaonic demotic Ka and Sar. Ka is the ever is the soul when you're alive. The Ba is the everlasting soul for the pharaohs, and Sar it means the king, pharaoh like a Tsar or Caesar, the king of Rome, or Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. And Ka Sar it means soul, king. 
Here it says Kazaria and the people of Qatar. They are called the Qatari. You know, Kazaria, Qataria. You know, there's very much in the name. So, Switzerland is still the base of Pharaoh. But I see this is slowly or maybe even rapidly taking over at the moment. And here too, you see all these pyramids in the building here. This is why the Al Jazeera TV network makes only propaganda for Hamas when talking about the Gaza war. Because Al Jazeera are the state media of the absolute monarchy of Qatar, who are in fact an emirate, which is identical to a caliphate, which Hamas wants to establish by murdering everyone else in the region. Qatar is the caliphate and they train, hide and finance Hamas for the obvious reasons. And they've been training and hiding all other terrorist uh, groups all the time before. So here it says, Al Jazeera is Qatar's propaganda network for the coming global caliphate. So here you can see the Raffles Hotel in Dubai. You know, and here it says Dubai Emirates of Pharaoh's nobility. Well, how much more obvious can it be? Eh? With a capstone in gold on it. And here as well on the building, another capstone and a pyramid on top. Here's another pyramid, here another one, here an obelisk, here pharaonic stuff. Here as well, you know, there are four pillars for the concept of four. The pillar is round for the concept of three. It says square and compass. Well, you know, this is Dubai. Now, how much more obvious can it be? I mean, this is not very far from ancient Egypt. It's like on the other side of the dip, you know. And also Dubai is an emirate of the oriental pharaonic nobility just like qatar and which is an absolute monarchy feudal system also called a caliphate or emirate who of course want to export the caliphate idea to the entire world and also to places like gaza and the philistine jj base which, of course, the royal house of al Winsar bin Arabiya also want, as they're not happy at all in the British constitutional monarchy of the horizontal rule. Yes, World War Three will be about the royalists trying to defeat the republicans and make a big caliphate out of Europe America, Australia, and the rest of the world. So here we can read about Dubai. You can look it up yourself. And uh, look at all the castles here. I mean, that's a sign that the nobility, I mean, they are there. Here, another one. And some more. So Pharaoh's nobility is here. And what is important to know, that's this here, the government. Uh, here you see, Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. Here it says, Dubai has been ruled by the Al Maktoum family since 1833, and the emirate is an absolute monarchy. And an absolute monarchy is a form of monarchy in which the monarch rules in their own right or power. In an absolute monarchy, the king or queen is by no means limited and has absolute power over the slaves. Often such monarchies are hereditary. They are dictatorships. You know. And um, so they are the vertical rule, and they want the vertical rule to expand into the caliphate. You know. That's why we have the Gaza war.
And here you can see the pharaonic Wafi shopping mall of Dubai with obelisks, pyramids, statues of their direct pharaonic ancestors and the winged sun disk of Horus. Do your shopping at Pharaoh Ramses II and get a pint of some heavenly Isis milk and some spicy busted meatballs. So here it says the name is the Wafi Mall supermarket in Dubai, Pharaoh Emirate. And an emirate is the same as a caliphate, you know, with obelisk, the symbol of the pharaonic domination, and a pyramid on top of it. And here the winged sun disk of Horus with the sun in the middle and here the two wings which is the 101 sun hieroglyph which we find everywhere and here still in dubai the sofitel pharaonic hotel with the winged sun disk of horus three lamps for the osiris isis horus family from big to small and the royal pillars of yachin and Boaz, do you have any doubt the pharaohs are living in the emirates where all the world's money went to since they've been draining Switzerland since the financial shift of 2008 world finance crisis? So here it says the emirate is the same as a caliphate, and this is the Sofital Hotel in Dubai. Here you got the Falcon, and this is the hotel desk, you know, imagine. Here you got the three lamps here, from big to small, and the, and the one in the middle. The winged sun disk of Horus, the two pillars, Yachin and Boaz. So that means all pharaohs of the entire world, they're, they're welcome here. And when World War Three starts, is happening, they will probably all be coming here, our masters. And of course, in Switzerland as well. This here is part of the origin of the Gaza War and Middle East crisis, which is an internal war of Pharaoh's nobility in between their vertical royalists and their horizontal republicans and here you can see again the um the hotel uh, desk with the um the falcon the sofitel hotel and here you can see a lot of anubis the uh, the jackal god here one there are four of them or maybe even what well, looks six at least so it's like a, a rebirth of uh, ancient Egypt here. I mean, can you deny it? No. You know, it's the reincarnation of ancient Egypt, and it's already there. The JJ Bays and America are horizontal republics, and Britain plays a dirty role pretending to be America's friend, but in reality, teaming up with the caliphate guys, thus pumping millions of Muslims into Europe in order to reinstall British absolute monarchy back into its full glory. And where are the Europeans in all of this? Well, slowly but certainly disappearing. Bye bye. Farewell, you dumb coward slaves. We're witnessing the rebirth of Pharaoh and the reincarnation of ancient Egypt. Fight now, people, or perish painfully. Of course, all these powers behind Hamas, like Saudi Arabia and absolute monarchy, Qatar, also an absolute monarchy, Dubai, also an absolute monarchy, represent the caliphate because an oriental absolute monarchy is a caliphate a pharaonic model they just want to have expanded throughout the middle east 
and Europe. Therefore, creating Hamas, Al-Qaeda, IS, Hezbollah, and the rest of these caliphatists. By the way, they call the European Caliphate Al-Andalus. We may use Pharaoh's media to see what happened, but they will never tell you why it happened or who did it make happen. At this point, I step in and tell you the whole story because this is what my house told me since I was a small kid. Now, I'll lead you the way.